at me. You guys, you guys. I just made my Kickstarter goal and my camera's crooked. I'm so excited, oh my god, you have no idea. I found out when I was on my lunch at work today and I almost cried. It's such an exciting time, I'm so excited. The other exciting thing is it's not over until June 19th, so people can still pledge if they want to and the extra money is gonna go towards advertising and it's also gonna go towards my next book that I published, which might be uh, New Aura again, because I unpublished it and there's a sequel and there will be a trequel. And so for people who read the first one, and want there to be more, I feel like I should do that. But yeah, I'm really, really excited for Chloe Diller to be a book. I'm really hoping for it to be published by the end of the summer, maybe September, but if it's sooner, that's more exciting and better, and I would like it to be sooner. <laughs> but it does take a little bit of time for the company that I'm working with to do the layout for me and then send me a proof and make sure everything looks good and then it takes a few weeks for it to be become available um, at the bookstores that it's going to be available at. I'm so excited. I'm so, so, so excited. I'm so excited it's going to be a thing. I'm just, ah, I'm so, ah, excited. <laughs> I thought I would share another little teaser with you guys. This will not have any spoilers, just so you know, so you don't have to worry about being spoiled for any part of the story. <laughs> So it was Christmas Eve and I was alone. I didn't even have a Christmas tree. Why didn't I get a Christmas tree? I guess I could have still gone out to get one, but the stores would be so crowded that I wouldn't have a pleasant shopping experience. I would be frustrated and most likely I would cry in the middle of the aisles. So I opted out for digging through one of my unpacked boxes of random crap that I didn't get rid of before moving, you know, to see if I had anything Christmassy stashed in there. I found spare toothbrushes that I always had on hand for guests if they came over and forgot their own, my workout shoes, two empty purses, maracas from Cuba, a flashlight, a baseball from a Jays game, and a string of Christmas lights. I smiled when I pulled them out, but the end was caught on something, and when I tugged on them, it brought with it my favorite sweater of Sean's. I didn't even know I packed that. I thought I got rid of all Sean things. I was happy that I had it, to know that not everything that reminded me of him was gone, but I couldn't help but feel the sting of tears as I got rid of the stuff on top and pulled it completely out of the box. It was a grey and navy Under Armour pullover that was worn so much the neck and cuffs were starting to fray. After we had been together for about a year, I pretty much stole it from him and wore it around the house almost every day. It was way too big on me and the sleeves always got in the way, but I just loved it so much. No matter how much I wore it, it always smelled like him, even though he always insisted that it smelled like me and complained that he couldn't wear it anymore because of that. But as I held it tightly in my hands and pressed it against my face, taking in a deep breath, I knew it smelled like Sean even after sitting in a box with my stinky shoes for three weeks. It still smelled like Sean. <laughs>